Hey there! Today I want to show you how to make borscht, a beetroot Ukrainian soup. I'm partly Ukrainian and I've made this soup dozens of times. Today I will show you how to avoid uh, most common mistakes and preserve its red rich color. This is not a traditional recipe because I'm using fish stock instead of beef stock, but still it's gonna be delicious. Let's move on to the recipe. For this recipe you will need cabbage, beetroot, carrots, onions, uh, uh, red uh, bell peppers, which are optional but I prefer to add them, tomatoes or tomato paste that you can replace it, potatoes, garlic, uh, lime juice or vinegar. It's better to use lime juice for this recipe as it has a milder taste and uh, salt, pepper, uh, fish stock. You can check uh, the link in the description to see uh, how to make fish stock at home. Also I'm gonna use uh, a little bit of tomato sauce that I got left from the previous recipe but that's also optional. You can use just tomatoes. First let's start by preparing beetroot. So this amazing vegetable has a lot of red color and the secret to preserve this color is to cook it with vinegar. When you expose beetroot to heat, it starts losing its color. If you cook it for long enough, it can become completely white. But when you cook it in uh, vinegar, it doesn't lose its color. The vinegar allows it to preserve its red color. So what uh, professional chefs usually do in restaurants is they uh, cook beetroot separately in a pot with uh, vinegar or lime juice or lemon juice. Then they simply add this uh, to the borscht at the very end when the other vegetables are cooked. It's very convenient because that's, uh, that allows you to preserve most of the color. We need to cut beetroot in julienne. like that. And there is a common mistake that chefs make while cooking beetroot separately. They fry it in vegetable oil. So the thing about oil and beetroot is that oil prevents the beetroot from giving the color away. So when you add oil to beetroot they're go not gonna give color anywhere. They're gonna preserve the color. So when you add it to the borscht they just keep the color and the borscht doesn't become red. So what we should do right now is to stew, stew them at very low heat uh, with uh, lime juice, a little bit of water, a little bit of sugar, but that's it, nothing else, that will be enough. So I will add one tablespoon of sugar, a little bit of lime juice, a little bit of water. Then I put it on the heat. You really should do this in a separate pot, it's really important. When it starts boiling, I will reduce the temperature and I cook it for about 30 minutes. Another thing that I forgot to mention that we also need to add tomatoes to the beetroot because tomatoes have acidity. And this acidity will allow them, will allow the beetroots to preserve the color as well. I added this tomato juice, tomato sauce, and then I'm gonna add uh, fresh tomatoes. I will cut them just in small pieces. And I just add them to the beetroot, bring it to a boil and let it simmer. Now let's prepare the vegetables for sautéing. I'll cut carrots and julienne.
You don't have to cut the carrots with a knife necessarily. If you have a mandolin at home, you can use a mandolin. But please don't use a box grater because box grater doesn't produce the same shape. Next, let's cut the onions. And the garlic. Let's saute the vegetables. Cold pan. Vegetable oil. Add salt in the very beginning. After it uh, gets hot, I'll reduce the temperature, mixing with the wooden spatula. This is a non-stick pan, so please make sure to use a wooden or silicone spatula. Our goal is not to get them brown, so try not to get them brown. For that reason, I'm using low temperature and non-stick pan. Meanwhile, let's cut bell peppers, julienne as well. In the regular way, like that. Don't forget to stir the vegetables from time to time. After about 4 minutes, when the vegetables are halfway cooked, I add bell peppers, because bell peppers take less time to be cooked. As you can see, the carrots and onions have already reduced in size. They're getting more aromatic. And they're not brown exactly what we need so i'm gonna saute them for another four minutes so that's the cabbage make sure there are no black spots on the surface i remove them with a the knife then cut it in half remove the core in this way cut it like that and julienne make sure to cut along the pattern so you have this match sticks it's been four more minutes the vegetables are completely cooked and as you can see they're not brown they have a really nice golden color so right now i'm gonna deglaze the pan with water to remove all the nutrients from the bottom fish stock and bring it to a boil it started boiling and now I'm going to remove all the fat with the ladle because it doesn't look beautiful so why did I decide to use uh, fish stock instead of beef or chicken stock which is tr accepted traditionally one day a few months ago i had a lot of fish bones at home and uh, i wanted to make borscht but didn't have any beef stock so i decided to give it a try i like uh, experimenting with new techniques and recipes and i decided to make uh, borscht out of fish and you know it worked pr pretty well the taste was really good that's how I discovered this recipe. Right now I live next to the ocean in the Philippines and uh, there is uh, plenty of fish. It's super cheap. So it's a good way to use it. Give it a try. When it boils, I remove all the fat, any vegetables, vegetable oil remaining. And I'm gonna add cabbage after you add cabbage it will produce a lot of water and now I'm not gonna add any additional water remember a very important rule when you make a soup and when you add many ingredients you should add one ingredient at a time and let the soup boil after each addition so I add uh, carrots I add like pages with carrots I add the fish stock then I let it boil but then I add cabbage I can't add uh, cabbage together with the vegetables. I learned this rule in my college, in my culinary college. I don't know the 
science behind this, but whenever I didn't follow this rule, my soup went bad in like 2-3 days in the fridge. So, yeah, make sure to follow this uh, rule. Now I'm gonna peel potatoes. You don't have to peel them, it's not, uh, it's not a requirement. If the skin is uh, clean, if there is no soil, you can simply uh, cut it with the skin. But in this case I prefer to peel them, because there are some parts of dirt on the skin. And now I'm going to cut the potatoes into mesh sticks. After I cut them, I put them in a the bowl. They contain a lot of starch. So if it gets into my soup, my soup will become more cloudy, which I don't want. So I usually just wash them a couple of times. Then I add it to my borscht. I can see it's very thick, so I'm gonna dilute it with water a little. And I bring it to a boil. In this case, I'm not adding any fish meat, but uh, it's you can add it. It's totally fine. You can just take fish fillet, cut it into these large dices, and add it in the very end, at the very last second. So you add them, you'll bring it to a boil, and then you turn the heat off immediately. The fish will be cooked uh, by itself, like in a few seconds. Fish takes very little time to cook. We started boiling. I remove the heat. If there is any foam or fat, just remove it with the ladle, like that. And I'm going to taste it for salt and pepper. And it definitely needs more salt and pepper. I've been cooking it for about 5 minutes. Potatoes take very little time to be cooked. These beetroots, I just tasted them. They're almost done. They're just slightly, slightly raw, but after I add them uh, to the main pan and uh, remove the heat, turn the heat off, they will be done in a few minutes. As you can see, they're completely red. They didn't lose their color thanks to the acidity. I'm going to add the beetroots to the soup and then I mix it. You can cook it for one, two more minutes and it's uh, totally done as you can see it has an amazing rich red flavor it's been one minute if there is any remaining fat on the borders just make sure to remove it and that's pretty much it that's done i turn off the heat now i'm going to serve it and here it is the final plating borscht is usually served with sour cream and greens such as parsley or green onions or any other herbs. Another thing about borscht is that it gets tastier every day. It is supposedly because um, vegetables uh, give away their flavor into the soup and that's how it becomes um, tastier, but it's just a theory. I don't really know the real reason, but uh, the fact is that it really gets tastier every day. The combination of flavors of uh, the vegetables and beetroots is really good. You should try this at home. I think you will like it. That's it. That's the recipe. If you like the video, give it a like. You can let me know what you think about this recipe in comments. And uh, subscribe to my channel to see my new videos. Thank you for watching.